In this video, we're going to be looking at some of the musculature of the pelvic limb. This view you see right here is a lateral view, looking at some of the superficial muscles of the proximal thigh and hip area. So just to orient, cranial is to this side, caudal is to this side, dorsal is here, and ventral would be here down towards the paws. As we start dorsally and work ventrally, we will see this first large muscle right here, which is the middle gluteal muscle. And on the caudal edge of that is this other muscle lying kind of over top or superficial, being the superficial gluteal muscle. We see this very large muscle that pretty much encompasses the entire lateral aspect of the pelvic limb. That is the biceps femoris muscle. As we continue to work caudally, we will start to see some more of the hamstring muscles, namely the semitendinosus and the semimembranosus. We'll see that a little bit better on the medial side. Coming back, again, we see the middle gluteal muscle. This triangular shaped muscle right here is the tensor fascia lata. And just deep to that, and deep to where the actual fascia lata would be, we will see our quadriceps muscle. If we reflect the biceps femoris, we will see the vastus lateralis. We then open that up and we can see the hot dog of the actual hot dog muscle is the rectus femoris. We then look and we'll go from lateral to medial, so vastus lateralis, vastus intermedius, and vastus medialis. So all four of those muscles make up the quadriceps femoris. After reflecting the biceps femoris again and looking at some of these deep muscles, we can see the adductor muscle here that is visualized from the lateral aspect. We have the quadris or the quadratus femoris. So you have the quadratus femoris and the quadriceps femoris. So two different muscles. The most proximal of these deep muscles back here is going to be the gemelli muscle, and the gemelli muscle can be best seen by finding this shiny tendon right here. And the muscle bellies on each side surrounding that muscle tendon is the gemelli muscle. That shiny tendon that you're seeing is actually the tendon of the internal obturator muscle. If we reflect the middle gluteal muscle, we can see this separate piece of muscle here lying just underneath or deep to the middle gluteal. This is the piriformis muscle. And if we reflect that piriformis muscle, we can now see the entirety of the deep gluteal muscle. If you reflect the deep gluteal muscle and get down to where the joint capsule is, this is where you can find this tiny little muscle lying right on the cranial aspect of the coxofemoral joint. That is the articularis cocci muscle. Now we will switch to the medial aspect of the leg and look at some of the medial and caudal muscles before moving down to the crus. Okay, so again, just to orient now, we're looking at the medial aspect of this pelvic limb with cranial being here and caudal being here. We first visualize the most cranial of these muscles on the medial side being the sartorius. And in the dog, the sartorius is made up of cranial and caudal parts. So cranial and caudal part of the sartorius. If you reflect that, we can again now visualize the vastus medialis muscle right here, which is a part of the quadriceps femoris. 
We also see this small little piriform or pyramidal shaped muscle. That's the pectineus muscle. The muscle that's quite superficial and kind of overlying a lot of these other muscles, including the adductor, is going to be the gracilis muscle. So you have to reflect that gracilis muscle in order to see the AD or adductor muscle. And again, that semimembranosus muscle. If you get deep underneath where your adductor muscle is, you can visualize this muscle lying on the ventral surface of the pelvis. This is the external obturator muscle. And you would have to see inside the pelvic cavity and this muscle lying on the dorsal aspect of that floor of the pelvis is the internal obturator muscle. So the internal and external obturator muscles kind of sandwich that obturator foramen. Since we're here, let's go ahead and move down to the muscles of the cruce. So again, we're still on the medial aspect here, so we can visualize the medial head of the gastrocnemius. And kind of underneath and deep to the medial head of the gastrocnemius, you can now see the superficial digital flexor muscle. We can also see this muscle right here, this kind of fan-shaped muscle that's attaching directly to the bone. That is the popliteus muscle. Just distal to that, you're going to see this tiny little muscle belly with a very distinct tendon. That is the, medi uh, the um, medial digital flexor muscle. So the medial digital flexor muscle, along with the lateral digital flexor muscle, will help to form the deep digital flexor muscle. So the deep digital flexor muscle is made up of the lateral digital flexor, the medial digital flexor, and then a very small muscle that's way up underneath here that's kind of difficult in the canine to see, but it's going to be the caudal tibial muscle. It's much easier to see the caudal tibial muscle in a cat. So let's flip this back over to where we're now visualizing the lateral aspect of the cruce. One muscle that I did neglect to mention now that we're back on the lateral side is this very thin strap of muscle that's just deep to the biceps femoris. That is the caudal crural abductor muscle, abductor, abductor muscle. Okay, moving back down to the area of the cruce, we'll start cranially and work our way caudally. So the cranial most cruel muscle is going to be the cranial tibial muscle, lying right on the cranial aspect of the tibia. As you move caudally, you will have the long digital extensor muscle. And then you will find this triangular shaped muscle right here. That is the fibularis longus muscle. If you follow its tendon distally, you will find another smaller tendon just caudal to that. That right there is the tendon of the lateral digital extensor muscle. So you have to kind of peel this fibularis longus and lateral digital flexor apart in order to see the lateral digital extensor muscle. And finally, we can also see the lateral digital flexor on the lateral side, along with the lateral head of the gastrocnemius. A couple differences, or not so much differences, but additions to the canine that will actually be found in the feline. So they actually have a couple extra muscles compared to the dog. So to orient yourself, we're looking at the lateral aspect of this kitty. 
Up here would be dorsal, ventral, cranial, and caudal. So in the kitty, we're gonna see this middle gluteal muscle right here. We will then see this superficial gluteal lying in the exact same spot. However, you have this extra muscle right here that is in between the superficial gluteal and the biceps femoris. That is gonna be the gluteofemoralis muscle. Another muscle that kitties have that dogs do not is this muscle here, which is part of the tricep surrey. So you have the two heads of the gastrocnemius along with the soleus muscle. So the soleus muscle is this muscle right here. You see attaching from the tibia and then attaching onto the Achilles tendon. So that's the soleus muscle. Another difference that you will notice in the cat is the fact that their sartorius muscle, so now we've moved to the medial aspect here, we see the sartorius muscle here is one single muscle. It does not have separate parts. So there's no cranial and caudal part to the sartorius muscle in the cat. So the last few muscles that we're gonna look at can actually be visualized best within the abdominal or pelvic cavity. So you see this muscle right here with this shiny tendon, that is the psoas minor muscle. It's going to attach right here on the cranial aspect of the pelvis. And just lateral to that, you see this large piece of muscle here, that is the psoas major muscle. The psoas major is going to fuse with the iliacus muscle and will attach down onto the lesser trochanter of the femur, just cranial to the pectineus muscle. So psoas minor, psoas major, or you're more than welcome to call this the iliopsoas muscle.